25th, Napoleon, in very good spirits, asked many questions in English, which, although he pronounced it as he would have done French, yet the words were correct and applied in their proper meaning. The 26th, Sir Hudson Lowe sent for me, found him in town. He observed that I had put too much political feeling into my letter respecting young causes, that my opinion must have related to what would have happened had he remained at Longwood, and that it appeared to enter too much into the feelings of those people. I replied that I could not separate my opinion from the cause of his complaints, and that he himself had said if the state of his son's health absolutely required his removal to Europe, he would not oppose it. Sir Hudson answered that he had certainly said that if it absolutely required such a measure, he would not oppose it, but that I had entered into a discussion not called for in the letter. He then spoke about the restrictions and showed me a letter which he said he intended to send to Bertrand, and upon which he desired to know my opinion. After reading it, I observed to His Excellency that I thought it calculated to produce some severe remarks from Napoleon, as, in fact, it left matters in nearly the same state as they had been before after having nominally removed some of the restrictions. On a little reflection, His Excellency appeared to be of the same opinion and said that he would reconsider the matter. In the meantime, he authorized me to tell General Bonaparte that several of the restrictions should be removed, especially those relative to speaking, that the limits should be enlarged, and that liberty should be granted to people to visit him nearly as in former times under the Admiral, informed Napoleon of this who replied that he desired no more than to have matters put as nearly as possible as they were under the admiral, that he thought it right and just if the governor suspected either an inhabitant of the island or a passenger or any of them, that he should not allow them to enter Longwood, but that what he, Napoleon, meant was that the majority respect passengers or inhabitants should be allowed to visit him and not one or two who had been picked out and sent up to Longwood by the governor or by his staff as a keeper of galley slaves would send a curious traveler to his galleys to see some extraordinary criminal. If, continued he, I met a man whose conversation pleased me, like the Admiral, for example, I should wish to see him and perhaps ask him to dinner and breakfast as was done before the governor's arrival. Therefore, I wish that a list should be sent in the first place by the governor to Bertrand, containing the names of the persons that he will allow to visit us, that afterwards Bertrand shall have the privilege of asking any person again whose name is upon that list. I will never see anyone coming up with a pass in which the day is fixed, which is a way of saying, come out this day and exhibit yourself. I want also that our situation may be clearly defined so that my household shall not be liable to the insults which they have all suffered and continue to suffer, either from being kept in the dark respecting the restrictions which he imposes or from the misconception of sentinels or the orders given being of a discretional nature which may put a sentinel upon his responsibility and will constitute him an arbitrary judge. The trifling vexations and humiliations which he makes us undergo are worse to us than the greater. I am willing, continued he, to listen to accommodation and not to insist upon too much, but he has no harder feeling. He thinks that a man is like a horse. Give him a bundle of hay and a roof to cover him, and nothing further is necessary to make him happy. His policy is that of the petty states of Italy to write and promise fairly, apparently give liberty, but afterwards, by insinuations, change everything. His is the policy of insinuations. I then asked if the governor consented, and the admiral were satisfied, would he hold a conference with that officer as an intermediator in order to bring about an arrangement? Napoleon replied, willingly, with the greatest pleasure, I would treat personally with the admiral, and I think that we could settle it in half an hour. I have so much confidence in him that if the English government would allow it and the admiral would pledge his word of honor that no one but himself should know the contents 
Unless there was some plot or intrigue against his government, I would write a letter putting him in possession of everything I know relative to my property in order that I might be able to make use of it. Tomorrow, continued he, I shall let you know whether I am of a like opinion relative to the intermediation. If I continue the same, you shall go to the governor and propose it to him. A letter sent by Count Bertrand to Sir Hudson Lowe requesting that countless causes might be permitted to visit Longwood previous to his departure in order to take leave of the emperor. The 27th gave Napoleon some newspapers. On looking over them, he observed an article about Pozzo de Borgo. Pozzo de Borgo, said he, was deputy to the legislative body during the revolution. He is a man of talent, an intriguer, and knows France well. As long as he remains there as an ambassador, you may be sure that Alexander does not consider Louis to be firmly seated upon the throne. When you see a Russian nominated as ambassador, you may then conclude that Alexander thinks the verb is likely to continue in France. He then desired me to go to the governor and tell him that if he were willing to come to an amicable arrangement, he, Napoleon, thought the best means of effecting it would be to authorize the admiral to act as intermediator. That if such were done, he had little doubt, but matters might be adjusted. That he wished it himself, as he did not like to complain. All he wanted was to live, or in other words, that the restrictions should not be of such a nature as to induce a person to wish for death. That in consequence of what I had said to him, he had ordered Bertrand to discontinue writing a complaint, which he had intended to have sent to Lord Castlereagh for the Prince Regent. And in fact, that he was desirous of an accommodation. Went to town to deliver the above message. Found that the governor had left it before my arrival. Communicated the object of my mission to Sir Thomas Reed, who replied that he knew the governor would never consent to allow the admiral to act as an intermediator. It was no use in proposing it. I replied that as I had been charged with the message, I must deliver it, as perhaps it might lead to good effects. Went to Plantation House and communicated my message to Sir Hudson Lowe. He said that he would accept the proposal, but that he had previously to decide upon a very delicate point, which might break off any proposed arrangement. That General Bonaparte had asked to see countless causes before his departure, which would do away the great object he had had in view for a month back, that of cutting off all communication between Longwood and Las Casas. That General Bonaparte might make important and dangerous communications to Las Casas, in order to obviate which he would propose that his staff officer should be present at the demanded interview, which was likely might anger General Bonaparte. He then wrote the following words on a piece of paper, which he desired to be the copy and to show the copy. The governor is not conscious of ever having willfully given the General Bonaparte any just cause of offense or disagreement. He has seen with pain misunderstandings arising at points where his duty would not allow him to pursue any other course, and which might have been frequently removed by a single word of explanation. Any channel by which he may think such misunderstandings may be removed, the governor is perfectly ready and willing to avail himself of. Sir Hudson then gave me a large packet for Count Bertrand, containing his answer to the application to see Las Casas, and some explanations relative to the restrictions, some of which he said he was willing should be altered, and that the fifth paragraph of the restrictions delivered in October was merely meant as a civil request to General Bonaparte not to subject himself to the interference of an officer by entering into long conversations with persons not authorized by the governor to communicate with him. He added that he would have some conversation with the Admiral previous to the latter's going to see Napoleon for the purpose of entering upon intermediation. 
the 28th, Napoleon indisposed, had passed a very uneasy night, and had suffered considerably from headache, saw him at 3 p.m. when he was still in bed and afflicted with severe headache. He had not seen anyone, informed him what Sir Hudson Lowe said respecting the proposed intermediation. I did not like to communicate what His Excellency had said about the interview which he had desired to have with Las Casas, as I thought it would both aggravate his illness and tend to impede the desired accommodation. While I was in his bedroom, Marchand came in and informed me that the bath which he had ordered could not be got ready on account of the total want of water at Longwood. However, he appeared well satisfied and expressed his fear that if Sir Pulteney came up this day. His indisposition might prevent his seeing and conversing with him. He desired me, therefore, to tell Count Bertrand, in case the Admiral came, to take him to his house, show him the necessary papers, and talk the matter over, adding that if he found himself well enough, he would send for him, but if not, that he would appoint a future day. So Count Bertrand afterwards, who asked me to explain the meaning of the passage in His Excellency's letter, in which he attempted to make it appear that the prohibition to Napoleon to speak was a piece of civility. Not having been educated for a special pleader, I felt myself at a loss to afford any explanation sufficient to establish the truth of the governor's doctrine. Sir Pulteney and Lady Malcolm came to Longwood and paid a visit to Count and Countess Bertrand and Montalon. No communication had been yet made by the governor to Sir Pulteney, who, when informed of the proposal, expressed his ardent wish that something might be done to put things upon a better footing between Napoleon and the governor, adding that he thought that if the matter were left to him, he could arrange it satisfactorily in a very little time. He observed, however, that until the governor authorized him, he would have no conversation on the subject, either with Napoleon or with any of his suite.